Hello, Pirman. How are you, man? Oh. I'm fine. Uh, the next talk is about raster and vector tiles optimized for cloud. And Pirman is a geospatial software developer since more than 15 years. He has contributed to Jadal, Kuji, Rex, and several other projects. Birman is co-founder of SourcePo, a Swiss company providing GIS services and solutions. I forgot anything, Birman? No, that's good enough. <laughs> Welcome to my talk, Cloud Optimized Formats for Rasters and Vectors Explained. My name is Pirmi Kalberer. I'm working for SourcePole. We are located in Zurich. We do development, WebJS development, and also desktop, QJS development, but also maintenance and support. So my topic today is accessing geodata over the web and there are a few problems with that geospatial data can be very big and reading over network is usually quite slow but when you're working with a desktop JS you usually have to download the file first and this is mm, this can be unfeasible for satellite imagery for instance when you want to access uh, many images and you don't have enough space locally. So what are the solutions for this problem? You can create tile caches. So you split the roster files into tiles and you have only to load the tiles which you're currently looking at. This is working very well for years now. Think of XYZ or WMTS services, but it has several disadvantages. Tile caches are expensive in, in multiple ways. Um, creating tile caches takes time and it doubles your space required for each raster data set. And it's also getting more difficult for using these rosters for analytical purposes. So we're looking for another solution. And this is this cloud optimizing, which is simply put, just sorting your file content. So you optimize the order of the content of your files for reading chunks, for reading parts of your files. And for that, there is a HTTP range header, which allows for partial reading. And if you solve that, you only have to find a good name for your format. Looking at the HTTP range request, first a curl command. There's only one additional header you have to add, which is this range header. And in this example, uh, I'm loading the first 2024 bytes of a file. There are other types of this range header, but it's essentially this. And this has applied first for TIFF files. TIFF is a very flexible raster format. So there is, there is a GeoTIFF implementation for a long time now. and this GeoTIFF already supports tiling and it supports overviews. So it's not so much to be done for optimizing it for web access. And this is ordering the metadata and ordering the imagery. And that's about it. And then you have cloud-optimized GeoTIFF 
or short cock. How do you create a cock? Uh, the typical way is this Qidal. Here is an example how you convert a regular tiff to a cock tiff. It has to be tiled, it should have overuse and it can be compressed. Since Qidal 3.1 there is a shorter form with this output format cock which implies these suggested parameters. How can you read a cloud optimized geotiff? First back again on the desktop. There some desktop software only supports files but with Qidal there is a special file path beginning with VSI curl which looks for the client like a local file but in reality it's a HTTP request and in this case to a cloud optimized geotiff. So you can just replace files for instance in QGIS or in map server with a cloud optimized geotiff read over HTTP. In the browser you can read it directly there is geotiff.js, which is a good library for reading geotiffs and cloud optimized geotiffs. And for Leaflet, there is an additional plugin, GeoRaster layer for Leaflet, which also supports the COG format. So that's the web page. And I open this COG Explorer. And what I do is I enter the URL of the Cloud Optimized Geotiff and it's loading in the browser and it's that darker area. I zoom in and this is all read from a single Geotiff file and it has similar performance than a, a, tiled, a tiled service. To use cocktips in QGIS, you add a raster layer and select the HTTPS protocol out of other network protocols. Use the HTTP URL to the cocktiff and add it as a layer. If you look at accessing vector data over the web, then it's not so easy as in the raster world. The youngest format, GeoJSON or also GML, are particularly bad for uh, junk access. Then GeoPackage could be an option, but GeoPackage is optimized for local disk block I.O. Shapefiles, one of the oldest formats, is surprisingly good for web access, but it's just too limited for using it as a modern format. So we needed a new format for that, and this is flat geobuff. Flat geobuff defines a metadata with an, with an index, which is an optimized packed Hilbert R tree index which defines also the order of the vector data and everything is based on flat buffers which is a format with a schema language which can be used portable and has also verification functionality and it is very efficient for the code. How can you create and read flat geobuff Again with GDAL, since 3.1 there is a flat GeoBuff driver and you can easily convert any GDAL OGR format to flat GeoBuff. And there are also many supported applications. And the web, it's open layers and leaflets. 
on the server side it's geo server which even supports uh, flat g above as a wfs output format and qjs as desktop gis there are libraries for many different languages javascript and typescript on the web and c c sharp java and rust i have also a short demo with flat g above so it's using an 11 gigabyte flat GBA file. And that's the demo page. And I can hold and move in the map. And this extend is loaded from one big flat GBA file. And it's really fast. There is also an application using flat buff data besides optimized OpenStreetMap data. It's called AV Street. It's a traffic simulation tool. That's how it looks like. So it's running in the browser or also native on the desktop. And you can make changes and simulate the results. I said earlier that GeoPackage is not well suited for web access, but maybe I'm wrong because there is a rather new project which does SQLite access over HTTP. It's called Absurd SQL. Um, it uses SQLJS as backend and supports read and write access. And there's even a demo application showing it. The next one I want to show is a new format called PM Tiles, which is a, an archive format for map tiles. It's contained in a single file, ordered in an optimized way for HTTP range request. It supports raster tiles and also vector tiles. So it can be used locally like a MB tiles file and the same file can be used efficiently over HTTP. So that's an interesting new format. The last format I talk about is point cloud data. There is a good candidate for cloud optimizing, which is entwine point tile EPT format. This is a storage layout for last zip files. It's octree based and has JSON metadata. So there is a, a draft specification called COPC, Cloud Optimized Point Cloud, which has the same layout, but includes uh, all metadata in the last zip header. So in the best case, it's only a single file and also the tiles, the octree can be embedded in this single file or it can be external like in EPT. So as a summary for rasters, we saw cloud optimized geotiffs for vectors. Uh, there is flat G above for tiles. You could use PM tiles. And for point clouds, there is CoPC coming. That was my very short introduction into cloud optimized geospatial formats. Thank you. Hello, Birman. Can you have uh, 
any more information for us about Hasselin's vector formats? Are the vector formats? Um, uh, what do you mean? Uh, I mean, there are many other vector formats. Um, I think I showed the best one uh, for using our HTTP and locally as well. And I talked a little bit about the other candidates, but there's no really an alternative right now, I see. Maybe vector tiles, but these are tiles, so it's not really original vector data. So it's already simplified and generalized for display. So that's not an option for many use cases. Um, I have one, one, many questions. And the first one is, can also all parts of the index be requested, streamed via HTTP range request, or has always the full index to be downloaded? Yeah, that's a question of how optimized the client is. A, a good uh, cognitive reader or also a reader of any of these formats reads uh, uh, not the whole index, but uh, like a, a block which is makes sense for reading. So it's always um, the, the goal to have good compromise between uh, doing not too many requests and not too big requests. So so you optimize that reading parts of the index, or if it's a small index, like for PM tiles, then you can read the whole index. But for uh, um, for flat geo buff, you read parts of the index, and, and the index is also ordered uh, in a, is also in a good order, so optimized order, so you can read many entries in the index at once. But that's that's the thing of optimization of the client side. Okay. The next one is: Does Mapbox or MapLibre supports flat geo buff? Um, I think the answer is no. Um, there is a driver for uh, uh, open layers, but not for Mapbox GL or OpenLibre right now. Okay. The next one. Do you have any experience with 3D vector data in that space? Old flat or both? work for that? The, yes, the 3D space is likely more in the direction of 3D tiles, the CCM format, which is an OGC community standard. So that's better suited for 3D applications. It's not really uh, this kind of format I showed here because it's especially done for HTTP uh, access. Um, Flat above is uh, does support 3D data. It supports all um, simple features types, but also the 3D extended types, which PostKey supports. So it is possible to build a 3D application in Flatchy above. But uh, the, I don't know an example. I don't know anyone who has done that yet, but it can be done. OK. Uh, it, is it easy to migrate from MB, MB tiles to PM tiles? There is a converter doing exactly that, convert files from MB tiles to PM tiles. So uh, migration on the data side is easy. Um, and the viewer has to support uh, PM tiles. I think that's not that, that difficult. Uh... The next one is, I have been used topo.json for large JSON data displayed through leaflets. It is still a bit slow. Would, would flat gel buff be a better vector data format to use? Currently, the data is stored locally, not on, on the cloud. Yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, Flat above is really a good replacement for large 
GeoJSON or TopoJSON files. GeoJSON is well suited for small files, but for big files, it's uh, you, you, it's really hard to optimize. So here is a great advantage of let like, GeoBuff, and you can really convert with OGR to OGR. You can convert your GeoJSON to flat GeoBuff. Um, and then you can serve it the same way as you served GeoJSON. It's just a viewer which has to support it. But as I said, open layers are supported and, and others do too. OK. Uh, is it possible to update a flat GeoBuff file particularly? Or do I have to recreate the whole file? Yeah, that's uh, a minor disadvantage of flat GeoBuff that updating is uh, not a cheap operation. So um, it depends where. So as long as you append data, it's uh, it's a cheap operation. But if you have to reorder everything, then you have to write the whole file again. Which, which takes time. So it's not optimized for writing a lot, it's optimized for reading. Okay. Uh, do you have any comments about ZAR as uh, streaming raster formats? It might be that I forgot that one in my list. I heard a lot about ZAR, but I never had a proper look at it. So I can't comment on that. OK. Uh, if range requests to COG or FDB is enough fast, time implementations are not needed, I think. What do you think? For some use cases, the answer is yes. So I mean, you saw this example. This is really. It was that fast that you don't need uh, a tile implementation for that. But I think a main difference between, for example, MVT vector tiles is that there you have um, prepared general generalized zoom levels. Um, flat above has uh, full data uh, without generalization usually. Uh, it's it's very fast getting uh, a subset, uh, a box out of it. But if you want to have an overview of a, of a larger area, then you get too, ma too much data. And then you need some kind of generalization. You can do that with Flutchy above, but it's um, so then you have to, to add another file for another Zoom level. And that's the main advantage of tile implementations which are targeted to this use case, building uh, tile pyramids. Uh, does it support resolutions, LOD? Yeah, that goes in the same direction. Uh, the flat chip of format itself doesn't know about LOD, but you can have uh, multiple files for different LODs and the, the client side uh, has to switch between the, the generalization level, this uh, level of detail level, um, according to, to the distance to the, to the uh, high res resolution data. Okay. How to convert PostGIS vector data to flat gel buff? OGR to OGR is the command line command, which does support yes. that. Uh, uh, but there is some news in there, because uh, I think last week, uh, PostJS got a direct flat GeoBuff support. Um, so there might be in the future similar things like the, the tile servers uh, built on uh, PostJS that you can serve flat GeoBuff directly out of PostJS. So it's a, and there is now an extension supporting directly um, delivering flat GeoBuff out of PostJS. Okay. Uh, uh, how can TileSafe benefit from DAS formats? 
I think the, what you could do is combine uh, combining uh, different formats. I mean, what today's vector tiles do not support is um, giving you the full resolution data, or that's not the use case. They are always uh, cut into tiles um, and 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 um, simplified on all levels. So what you can do, you can have a tile server showing background data, maybe raster data, and then if you zoomed in, you get full resolution vector data and can edit this data. You can you can um, work with all the features uh, the vectors provide or all the uh, attributes this vector give, and you have to, the whole geometry uh, you can get from the server. Uh, uh, no more questions, Birman. Thank a lot for uh, your talk. You can, can you talk more about, you have three minutes yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have, uh, I have a question. Uh, about uh, level of details, there is any idea for rendering server sites? Uh, uh, Treat the level of details in the server sites. Uh, rendering on server side of flat like geobuff or or uh, one of the other formats I mentioned. Are you thinking oh. of flat like geobuff? Because you can already render that on on, on server side. Because uh, like uh, UMN Map Server supports most of these formats. It supports uh, GeoTIFF or CogTIFF. It supports uh, flat GeoBuff. So you can use, for instance, uh, Map Server as renderer on server side and deliver uh, roster maps. So that's doable today. Okay. Thank you a lot. Uh, I will be a little break, uh, two minutes, and I will be back. I see. Bye-bye, Pirman.